And so I'd like to welcome both Stuart Brocklehurst uh, and Gina from Supply Devon, who are going to provide uh, a presentation outlining the role of Supply Devon and the benefits it has uh, in bringing together local businesses and organisations through using their free platform for the procurement and purchasing needs, which is actually based upon bringing together the buyers and the sellers on a uh, AI platform. Now, having not seen the presentation in advance, all my mind is thinking is actually this is an AI-led dating service for the supply chain. So um, without further ado, I shall hand over to Stuart and look forward to seeing uh, the presentation. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, uh, Andrew. Um, hearing Adrian speak earlier, he spoke really passionately, cogently describing the nature of the challenge we face. Uh, but part of the challenge is what do we then do about it as he was setting out. Many organisations, many councils locally have declared a climate emergency, but then how do you take action? How do you make a difference? Supply Devon is not unfortunately the entire answer, but it is part of it. And it's something which is actually practical and possible to do now. If we could start the presentation, please. Great. So you may be aware that last year the government uh, created the Sustainable Innovation Fund with three really challenging goals, driving economic recovery from COVID, whilst addressing climate change. So how do you recover from the pandemic in a way that reduces emissions? And also responding to Black Lives Matter and finding ways to counter discrimination and reduce ethnic disparities. This project is a joint venture between Applegate, Geiston and the University of Exeter, funded by UKRI. So the objectives are to bring about community wealth building, recycle spend, which is put into the economy locally, often when there are initiatives to try and drive uh, good things within Devon, the money comes in and immediately goes out to different parts of the country. Uh, and to grow the GDA uh, of the area. Then environmentally, critically, to reduce emissions from unnecessary transport of goods and workers and to measure those. And ethically, to address discrimination in machine learning, the artificial intelligence which underlies the platform. So, in economic terms, firstly, our economy here in Southwest England is very heavily weighted to uh, small and medium-sized enterprises. So if we're going to buy more locally, that means buying more from SMEs. And there's a great opportunity there because uh, councils, universities, hospitals spend a lot in lower value purchases, which can make a, a big difference to local firms. However, these can be difficult to engage. They're often put off by scary procurement processes. Uh, and you have to ensure a balanced approach. If there are 500 firms supplying something within Devon, uh, it's very hard for finance teams to manage 500 responses. So the solution which was developed is a very easy to use, user-friendly portal, which uses machine learning to work out which are the best suppliers, as Andrew was saying, essentially a dating service to match up. And that can be done on district, across the county, and it also provides a supplier brief of key information that the finance team will need for onboarding. So that's very detailed, very practical, but it's important if it's actually gonna be used and make a difference. In terms of the environmental aspect, uh, with uh, uh, the other universities, Centre for Energy and the Environment, uh, we created a methodology which can calculate the emissions saved both for the project overall and uh, for major users for uh, their own work uh, independently. Quite often, there are needs of big organisations in Devon, which can be met by people making those goods, supplying those services locally. But because organisations, big organisations, tend only to deal with other big organisations, they'll often be shipped in from Newcastle, Hamburg, wherever creating unnecessary emissions from the transport of those goods or the transport of people to work on projects. So where appropriate to find local suppliers, uh, that can reduce the emissions and we re can record 
how great that reduction is. We can also see forward the potential to develop this into a complete recording of scope three emissions from procurement, and then helping getting a virtuous circle going by presenting the emissions along with the price in responses to tenders to create essentially a competitive advantage for suppliers to cut their emissions and to certify to a good standard how they can reduce them. Uh, to Claire's question, this isn't sector specific. Uh, it goes across uh, almost all goods and services. The only exception is food, where there's a separate initiative, the Southwest Food Hub, uh, which is coming on stream next year to address that. The ethical side has actually been really um, interesting, a very positive thing. Uh, artificial intelligence, unfortunately, learns from humans. That means it can learn racism and sexism. So we set out to basically teach the system never to learn those bad behaviours. What we've actually been able to do, which is, is quite cutting edge and quite exciting, we've gone beyond that for every tender uh, the shortlist of companies who get the chance to bid is matched against the diversity in the supplier base. And we can add in more female owned, more ethnic minority owned businesses uh, to ensure um, diversity in those who get the chance to bid, uh, give people the chance to get to the table, which often isn't the case. And this is uh, quite groundbreaking in uh, ethical AI, which is a, a really important subject for the future. So in terms of how it works, it's fairly straightforward. The buyers set out what they need. Uh, that is matched then to suppliers who can respond. Uh, the buyers receive the responses and then choose with whom to work. Uh, it's a very simple platform to use. As I say, that's really important to get suppliers to engage so they're not put off, frightened away. Uh, and so for a supplier, you have a dashboard like this, you can see the requests which come through and then you can respond to them, either that you can supply the item or a substitute or ask questions to um, get the, uh, the details, the extra details you may need in order to be able to quote. So it's a platform with a lot of complexity at the back end in the artificial intelligence but very simple at the front end. It's a way we can engage in practical community wealth building right here, right now. And it's a means which can be adopted right uh, away to start the process of reducing carbon emissions from procurement with then future potential developments ahead, which can take that on even further. I'll leave it there and uh, thank you uh, for the opportunity to share this with you. Stuart, that was great. Thank you very much indeed. That's really interesting on sort of, I engage an awful lot in the procurement uh, field uh, in areas that I work and to understand that this is going on in the background is, is really quite fascinating. Um, I'm gonna certainly have a little uh, delve uh, further. Um, we do have everybody uh, about a quarter of an hour now for questions, both for Stuart and also for Jorn. So if you'd like to ask any direct questions, uh, please add them into the uh, comments box uh, and we will be able to respond uh, directly. And actually, if I can kick off um, while you're here, uh, Stuart, with us uh, on uh, the Devon portal. Public sector organisations, in terms of their own procurement, have to adhere to quite a strict rule in terms of obtaining um, the most economically advantageous supplier, and that's a you know a defined government term. Um, so it's not always the cheapest; it's, it's the best. So, in terms of the supply portal, are there opportunities for host suppliers? to be part of a pre-approved type framework approach that automatically puts them into a box compliant for public sector bodies to call off from. Mm -hmm. So um, actually in December, 
uh, the Cabinet Office issued PPN 1120, normal sort of very user-friendly Cabinet Office term, but which did something quite radical. Uh, it said that um, uh, below threshold procurement, uh, so there's a certain threshold at which things have to be published previously in the Journal of the European Union and now in the, the successor we have for the UK, um, below threshold, uh, public bodies are allowed to take into account the social value of the choice, not simply best value in economic terms. So public bodies are now able to say that they will favour local suppliers, they will favour suppliers who can demonstrate lower emissions, etc., for below threshold. And generally where we're talking uh, and where this has been used by NHS, by councils, uh, that is for the below threshold uh, payments where they now have this authority and legal framework to act. In terms of um, the, the pre-approval, that is something which has been explored and it can be provided the information where they are already working with the public sector. However, to get the real benefit, it's going to be important that it's not just limited to the sort of the magic circle who are already inside the tent. Uh, one of the big purposes here is to try and broaden out particularly public sector procurement to a wider array of businesses, whether they be social enterprises, collectives, uh, for-profit businesses, and we're looking at bringing all of those in. That's really quite interesting because from a sort of a public procurement uh, arena point of view, if you're able now to capture and say, look, I want to do the least environmentally damaging option in terms of um, carbon footprints for my products, you can actually pre-filter and score, subject to it being part of the programme, that into your list of suppliers at source. Exactly. To, to be precise, you can only do it for the relatively lower value. Um, so if it's a really big project in the tens of millions, slightly oddly, you're not yet legally allowed to do that. Um, but already uh, your sub-threshold is still quite substantive purchasing and collectively they add up to a great deal. Um, if I take the opportunity to respond to something in the, the chat whilst I'm here, uh, there's no limit on the maximum value. This came partly from in the pandemic, uh, March last year, we set up a, a COVID supply hub uh, as an, a not-for-profit means to match supply and demand of things like PPE, which ended up um, arranging delivery of over a billion items of PPE. And there were individual transactions there in the tens of millions. So there's no limit, but for public sector bodies, PPN 1120 does put a framework which typically will be under 100,000 pounds. Thank you, Stuart.